I got a story for you guys, man. I got a story about respect. How people show respect for your relationship. How people show respect for you as a man. This particular event happened when we were in college. We came up for one of the Christmas breaks and I went to the studio. Now the studio I went to is not no top notch studio. It was my boy Nick's house. Shout out to my boy Nick. If you're familiar with Brooklyn, you know where King's Plaza is. Okay, so Nick lived close to King's Plaza. Not not right by King's Plaza, but close. I don't remember the particular street. But he lived a few blocks away from the Burger King. I don't know if the Burger King is still there. But he lived a few blocks away from the Burger King. Usually, and this is how we met. Okay, we met at that Burger King. I used to work there. He used to work there. Now, usually when I went, when I go to Nick's house to, to record a song or to just hang out, I used to walk home. I used to walk up Utica Avenue from that particular area to Snyder. Okay, I lived between Tilden and Snyder. Now, this is really for people who are familiar with Brooklyn. Um, based on based on my editing skills, I think I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put up a map. So I can show you exactly like what I'm talking about. Now that was a long walk. I'm going to be real with you. That was a long walk. This particular day, I had my girl with me. My current wife. I had, I had her with me. And I was not taking a bus nor was I walking with her. Because we ended up finishing at like 2 in the morning. So at 2 in the morning, I'm not waiting for the bus with you out there. I'm definitely not walking with you out there. I'm not getting on a bus with you out there. You know what I'm saying? Probably if I was by myself, then yeah. I don't know. At that, And even me doing that shit by myself was so stupid. Because really, I used to do that shit to test my heart. In my mind, it's like, yo, if I get on the bus right now, or if I take a cab, I'm pussy. And that was, that was just a stupid way of thinking. But anyway, we ended up calling in a cab and something transpired in the cab that it haunted me for for some years to come so we get in the cab it was a caribbean guy i believe he might have been jamaican or he might have been i'll say he was jamaican you know what i'm saying we just gonna say he's jamaican a conversation ensued and throughout the conversation the answers and the response that the guy was giving was directly directed to me now if you knew me from back then you know i was quiet like, nobody from high school or college would probably figure I would be doing YouTube, okay? I was quiet. I was funny, but I was quiet. I was real reserved. At that particular time, I had a I had a temper. I had an emotional temper, meaning that I was no gangster. I would never claim to be no gangster, but I had emotional outbursts that I usually did things I regretted. So, and thank God where I'm at now because I feel as though I have came a long fucking way. I have came a long way. From, from where I was before. Because even now, I deal with stuff that I feel as though 10 years ago, I'd probably be in jail right now. We in the cab, and the conversation is going. And my girl is like, she's asking like questions to the dude, and he's basically responding to me. It just seemed like he wasn't really trying to carry a dialogue with her like that. She got hot. <laughs> she got hot, bro. She was upset to the point where like a, a argument started, but the dude still wasn't arguing with her. He was just talking to me like, hey, man, you know, and da da da. Till eventually they started going in against each other. And then she's looking to me like, RJ, you just gonna let him disrespect me like this? And you just gonna let me? And my whole thing was like, yo, both y'all need to calm the fuck down. Like, both y'all need to calm the fuck down. Like, y'all doing too much. And with my response to that, she felt as though. You didn't defend me. He was disrespecting me, and you didn't defend me. And for a while, I felt bad. Because I'm like, yo, damn, I really didn't do my duty as a man. Like, what, should I have punched him in the face? Like, what should I have done? But at the same time, like, something just didn't seem right. It just didn't, it didn't feel right. Like, even though she was saying that I didn't defend her, I still felt as though I did the right thing. But I just couldn't, I couldn't put it in words. Like, what did I do that was right? What did I do that was wrong? I just couldn't put it in words. Till a few years later, till a few years later, something transpired between my now wife and a clerk at uh, SunTrust. It was a bank at SunTrust. And the conversation, like, so again, I was quiet. I don't really... I don't like doing dialogue. We went to, we started, this is when we moved into our fourth apartment. Because we was moving around a lot, you know what I'm saying? Um, We moved from, I used to live in Sandy Springs, then we started living together. We lived in some place called the Darlington. Then we moved to Athens, we moved to Griffin. I believe this was when we, when we lived on Piedmont. 
So the joint account was going to be through Centrus. We go to this the Centrus um branch and it was a black guy in there. Black dude Dude, handsome guy. And a conversation ensued between the two of them. The conversation was innocent, but at the same time, I felt like they were doing too much talking. You know what I'm saying? And the way the conversation was going, I felt excluded from the conversation. It didn't feel right. But at the same time, I didn't want to come off as being insecure or jealous. So, I, you know, I'm... I sat there and I, I let it happen. I'm not gonna lie, I let it happen. We finished our transaction, uh, said goodbye, and a few days later, my wife calls me and tells me that, well, she, we weren't married yet, but my girl calls me and tells me that, um, hey, you know the, the guy at SunTrust, he calls me to check up and make sure that everything was okay. And I was like, huh? What you mean? She's like, yeah, he called me. That was so weird. Like, I just didn't understand why he called me to, to like, make sure everything was okay. Like, just that just didn't make any sense. And then I believe he called again and said, hey, I made a mistake. Um, I need, we need you, I need you to come in to, uh, to validate something. Which was weird also. So I called him. She, like she gave me the number and I called him. So I called him dude on the phone. I'm like, hey bro, how you doing? And he's like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, yeah, this is uh Danae's husband, right? I was like, this is Danae's husband. I, I threw the husband card out there. She said that um there was something wrong with the account. Immediately when I said this was Danae's husband, the nigga started stuttering. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um um uh uh the um um and he gave me some bullshit excuse as to why he was calling. And I was like, yeah, bro, but it's two people on the account. You could have easily just called me to figure that situation out instead of calling her. You know, respectfully. And the dude was like, oh, yeah, but it's it's no big deal. It's no big deal. You know, I'll I'll just, uh, you know, we, we can fix it on our end. I was like, you sure? Because she said that you needed her to come in. He's like, no, 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 it's okay. I could, we can fix it on our end, whatever. I got a homeboy that he's like a manager at, at Bank of America. So I explained this shit to him. And he was like, yo, it sounded like he did that shit on purpose to have her come back in. Or to have a reason to call her. And then that goes back to like the conversation that they were having where I was like, yeah, I felt kind of excluded. What basically transpired, bro, is that this dude felt comfortable. My wife is a very friendly person. She's not up on game like that. So a lot of times, like, she wouldn't notice when something is going too far. She wouldn't notice when a guy is, like, fishing, fishing. And to me, I, maybe I should have said something in that situation, but again, we were conducting a business transaction, so, but deep down, bro, I knew that this man was fishing. Like, I knew it was like, nah, you, you, you going in, you doing, you doing a little too much talking. You feel what I'm saying? And he got comfortable, and he thought he had one. He put a little play in place, it didn't, it didn't go as planned. I'm pretty sure, based on the conversation they were having, he thought, hey, she's so friendly, like, oh, maybe she flirting, maybe she feeling me. She talking to me like that in front of her, man, yeah, maybe she feeling me. So I'm going to put this little play in place. I'm going to get her to come down here by herself and, you know, I'm going to see what's up. Or I'm going to call her and I'm going to keep the, the the dialogue going. And I got me one. He wasn't expecting her to tell me that he called. So when I called him back, it was one of those like, oh, oh, shit, damn, she done snitched on me type shit. Let's go back to the original event that took place when we were much younger and the cab driver was not really trying to keep a dialogue with her and was more so talking with me. He was showing me respect. He was showing respect. Don't think because your girl has a ring on her finger, she's safe. Don't think because your girl go out there and she say, I got a boyfriend or I'm married, she's safe. Because the next comment, the next sentence that might come out that particular man's mouth is, so you're not allowed to have friends? You're not allowed to have friends? I remember my, my wife told me, man, she went to the grocery store one day and this uh this old head came up to her and was like, hey, hey, uh, young lady, you're you're gorgeous. Um, and then she said, Hey, thank you, but I'm um, I'm married. And the nigga said, Oh wow, how how long have you had that problem? This is an old head. She said this nigga gotta be about 42, 43. Looking at a young lady that's married, and instead of saying congratulations, and instead of being happy for another black man for locking a beautiful sister down. He says, how long have you had that problem? So when I go back now and I think about that cab driver and how during that ride, part of me was like, damn, my girl is saying he disrespecting her. Like, maybe I should just haul off and do something to this nigga. Or maybe maybe I need to jump in here and bark on this nigga. But then a part of me was saying, 
Nah, just tell the both of them to chill out. And for years, it was bothering me because I just felt like I didn't handle business the way I was supposed to. I did the right thing. This is a conversation me and my wife might need to have on camera because I, I feel as though I tried to explain it to her before, but at that particular time, I couldn't articulate it the right way. But yeah, I did the right thing, man. You have to pay attention to how dudes act when they're around you and your woman. Dudes will size you up in front of your woman without you even knowing it. Egotistical bullshit. The old head that my wife was just upset at, he wasn't directing the conversation towards her, and she got on her woman empowerment, Sojourner Truth, Sister Soldier. Oh! You just disrespectful, you're not gonna treat me like I'm not here. And he was respecting my space. He was respecting my personal space. He wanted to carry a conversation, he was carrying a conversation with me, not her. I can understand that. The, the bank teller, that's disrespect.